My next speaker is Professor Dr. Munir Amanullah. He's our guest from Pakistan. He's a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon, associate uh, postgraduate dean, Aga Khan University, Karachi, from Pakistan. The topic is, does quality training translate into quality patient care, role of postgraduate medical education? Professor <laughs> Munir Amanullah. I'll request the speakers to please stick to the timing. The timing is displayed, timekeeping is displayed right in front. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, and the timing uh, will start from the next speaker. <laughs> uh, greetings from Pakistan. Asalaamu As Alaikum and good morning to everyone. I was supposed to be just uh, chairing a session, but somehow Sohail managed to twist my arm and get me to give a talk. So you'll have to bear with me. So we'll give, start on. I've changed the, the topic of my presentation just slightly. And I think it sets, sets in well with the preceding talk about if you have good training, you will end up with good doctors. Quality training ends up with quality doctors. And that is what our aim is. So I'm going to take you through a down a storyline story uh, about Alhan University Hospital and its residency program. So this is whether a sunset or a sunrise, I don't know, but I had this picture, it looked nice, so I put it up as a sunrise. So this is dawn of the AKE residency program, it started in 1986. That's the Al Khan University. How many of you know the Al Khan University, have heard about it, been there, lived there? Oh, so a fair amount, so it's quite popular here. As mentioned earlier, change is the only constant Nothing else is. And we have seen over the last few centuries that medical education has changed from just being an apprenticeship to organ system based model or the clinical presentation model or the competence based model. And there are, these are changing uh, as we speak. The developments in health systems have been societal need support. You have to have flexible educational programs. Your curricular needs to be reformed and your strategies for assessment have to be up to date. Do you need a teacher who is a repository of knowledge or does he facilitate learning? Does he, do you want a teacher who is opinion based or evidence based? We have to look at performance and outcomes, curricular mapping and skills. So as a teacher, which most of us are, did we ever know that we were, had 12 roles? We were not just a facilitator, but we also have to be a role model, a resource developer, a planner, an accessor, everything. So the Aachen University Medical, Postgraduate Medical uh, Education has a mission. And it, that is to prepare individuals for acquisition of personal and professional attributes and characteristics and competencies, mainly looking at knowledge, skills, and attitudes. We are all familiar with all this. But we also have to realize that there is a story in here. This young man was, had an unfortunate accident while he was in his second year of nephrology residency. He had CPR, needed chest tubes, and then he was found to be paraplegic. He was engaged, which later got disengaged. And after a year, returned back to the residency program. We made adjustments in all our accessibility so that he could travel in a motorized uh, wheelchair. And there he is, three years later, graduating from the program. That is what we inculcate into our residents, the idea of professionalism. This is the organogram that the associate dean of the postgraduate medical education reports to the dean of the medical college. And all the other committees related to postgraduate medical education report to the associate dean. So it is a pivotal uh, point in our medical education. The road has been narrow and twisty and sometimes slippery and down the slope, but there is always light at the end. So the systematic monitoring, what is quality assurance? It's a systematic monitoring and evaluation of learning and teaching and the process that support them. 
and it, we have to ensure that standards of academic diploma and degrees which are uh, in, uh, which are given meets the expectation of the university and the quality of student learning and their experience is of uh, due importance. So we strive to continuously improve the quality of learning opportunities by improving the process and systems, thereby raising the standards of training programs. Before 1986, there was no concept of a structured training program. It was all apprenticeship, no assessment, and certainly no progression or any curriculum. There are certain components which are common to all. So everyone who comes into AKU has to learn about biomedical ethics, communication skills, management skills, and especially research. This is the Aga Khan University campus. It's a little bit more greener than the rest of, the rest of Karachi, and that's why it's sometimes known as the oasis of Karachi. So we have one year training in a program for interns, and then we have got 33 residency programs and 32 fellowship programs, all ending up with a post-fellowship uh, degree. There is an actual process and system in place for them to get inducted, selected, and graduate. Anybody recognize this? Lake Sefal Muluk, that is true. Who have, who have not been there, we can organize a trip. It only cost 10,000 pounds, 8,000 to me. So, so there is a PGME selection committee which actually works for six months from June, July till December. And what they do is they advertise. The, there is online application. There is an admission test which is standardized for all programs. Interview which is standardized on a form for, for all programs. This is then put into a centralized uh, database. And then the selection is done by the program director and his team. But the final selection is then ultimately done by the PGME. And this is a transparent process. That means in that selection committee, there is no program director or chair. It is other people. And then those selected go through a one week rigorous orientation program. So the curriculum actually meets and probably nearly always exceeds the standards of CPSB, that is our local uh, college, as well as the Royal Colleges uh, of UK. It is competency-based curriculum. And what we are trying to introduce over the years is going to be what Sohail uh, specializes in, is enhanced medical education. And that is with blended learning, virtual patient, telemedicine, and simulation. In fact, we are the only center in the region to have a center for innovation in medical education with simulation as the main purpose. That is one of our consultants actually is practicing to do transesophageal echocardiogram. This is ER doctor teaching about heart murmurs and how to listen to them and where to listen to them. And this is a procedure being done by one of the emergency medicine uh, doctors on a dummy. So this is all present in the CIME. They have to go through this, this part of the curriculum. They all have one or two modules which is studied in the CIME. Scholarly activities they do, they con continuously be, uh, present in uh, grand rounds and M&Ms and multidisciplinary meetings. They have a synopsis to write, they have a dissertation to write, and they do have scientific papers to present. And we provide them financial support and a lot of them go for international presentations. They are always assessed at the end of the rotation by the faculty, which is with feedback, and this is on a, a software, which is known as 145. They, we look at the training portfolio, we help them develop it. There's an end of year exam for all residents, and all the residents evaluate the program as well as the faculty they have just rotated with. So we have a standardized criteria for promotion. They have, which looks at the continuous assessment, in-service examination, academic presentations, and research. And there are certain mandatory, uh, uh, mandatory assessments. That is attendance in the academic uh, sessions, passing end of year exam, which is at the level of a uh, fellowship exam, so exit exam level. And, but all the, pay, all the students give it give the same exam, and they have uh, marked separately according to the level of residency. 
and they do, should have had synopsis and dissertation presented uh, and accepted at the CPSP. A sunny day in Karachi, which is like always. We do also develop international collaborations and we have got two month elective scholarship for one resident in a year in Columbia. That's not Columbia University, but this is the country Columbia. And uh, you know, I know everybody's thinking what are they doing with the, all the drug uh, mafia over there, but I think we are comfortable with that. One year elective scholarship for neurosciences for one female resident and that is specifically for a female uh, resident and that's at the Stanford University. And we are looking at developing MTI uh, program with the, with the UK. A uh, lot of our doctors who have graduated actually come and do MTI attachment over here and then they stay on. But what we are trying to look at is developing the MTI program within the curriculum. So extending the training program by a year and sending them over here for a year in their penultimate year and they come back as chief residents, finish the year, graduate and then they are uh, you know, fully trained. So we just don't have what I'm saying is not you don't have to believe it, but we do have internal and external review of it. Internal review every two years, external review every four years. And of all the external reviews that we have had, we have had one constant statement. And these are external re reviewers from USA, Canada, UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, and uh, a few from the Middle East. And they all have to say this, that the training program are at par, if not better, than most of the programs in the West and developing countries. So what do we have to show for it? We have the graduation ceremony in which the faculty and graduates pa participate in a academic procession. We give clinical achievement award as well as research awards. This is Professor Khalid Khan, who is actually a professor of gynecology at Barts in London. He's a graduate from the Aachen University Medical College as well as the residency program. And that's Kamran Hamid, who is a graduate from the medical pro from the PGME program, and he's dean of the Ziauddin University. Was dean of the Ziauddin University. So these are now, these are now high-profile people. So in in, a, in short, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wish, wise choice of many alternatives. So what have we achieved? So we can say in a nutshell that 70% of all our graduates pass the exit exam within the first year, within the year after they have graduated, and about 15 to 20% do it while in residency. And when I say the exit exam, it's not just the one in Pakistan, but also the FRC, FRCS or MRCP and whatever exams we have in UK. 85% of them are employed within one year as consultants or junior faculty uh, within the uh, year after graduation. We have about 50 publications each year from residents as the first author. We have about 500 uh, publications each year from the Aachen University. 15 international presentations and majority of them get the best uh, award, presentation award. There have been two deans, there have been five associate deans, multiple chairs, but the main and most exciting uh, thing that we have achieved is that 70% of all our graduates from the postgraduate medical education program are working outside of their alma mater. Quite a few of them are internationally placed faculty and consultants, and majority of them are in Pakistan. This is the day of the graduation. It has been a high peak, but they have achieved it. And what do we have to show for it? Dr. Farat Abbas, Dean of the Aachen University. Rahim Danani, Chair of Family Medicine in East, East Africa. Kamran Hamid, like I told you, he's now Chair of Medicine in East Africa. And Ahmed Shafri, who's actually a surgeon and went down the route of medical ethics and is now, now a Professor of Medical Ethics. So these are stars that we are proud of, but there are many out there. Thank you very much. Question? Please.
is part of the world in order to improve the health system of their respective country. But I could not find it. They are collaborating with the government in order to bring some change in that country. So I'm just wondering what is the benefit of those, uh, where they are going. I can't see those, any outcome in the country. So I'd just like to ask you that question. I think uh, that's a very important question. Uh, so we have about, at this point in time, maybe 400 or 500 residents uh, who, who train through the residency program within Pakistan. And when I say we have having an impact, the impact is at a level where they are improving the education. When we are trust are trying to improve a un institution which is controlled by the government, it is, doesn't happen because there are too many problems there. But there is a success story. I'll tell you one. If you go to Children's Hospital Lahore, 10, 12 years ago, there was no pediatric cardiac surgery performed over there. One of our trainees, Asim Khan, he went there and he started the program. And now it is the best program in the country. And they do over nearly a thousand cases. So from non-existent to existed. And what he has done in the meantime, he's also trained others so they have gone and opened up a center in Multan, and they have opened another center in Lahore, and that is how we are talking about progression. And each speciality that, that, have, that we have trained has been working in that manner. Anything which is associated with the government, the health sector in Pakistan, it has not been able to deliver. And there are too many things which are hindrance, both at the secretary level, at the ministerial level, at every level. And we, we can have a hour long discussion on that, but it will serve no purpose. The purpose of this presentation is to realize that you have a quality educational program running in the country, which is having an impact. And all the other programs are now having a structured training program, whether it is in this government sector or whether in the private sector. Thank you. Just one quick question from Professor Chima. Uh, I'll just have a comment here. A comment. On to what my colleague said over there. I think linking your post fellowship uh, to an MTI model, for example, is a fantastic idea because then you would ask people to leave within their subscribed period of two to three years, come out, gain a specific skill, and then bring it back down there. This model has been implemented, for example, at Shoka Park. I can talk of my own specialty, which is digestive disease unit. They got, they have created new positions probably inspired by our Bana Prophet Show called Senior Instructors. They give them post-fellowship three-year program and they are funded to go out and gain specific skills before they can bring them back and have an employment waiting for them. So you almost can have a hub and scope model. What you looking at really is that you've got fantastic program. You've got 70% of people gone out there and diluted to the big system. Probably they are well trained, probably they are very competitive people, they compete in first word. Programs, but very little is seen back at the grassroots level. So you almost could see Aga Khan Karachi is the hub, and you have 12 districts uh, with the same philosophy, where you will run as you mentioned, Dr. Asin. So just a suggestion there. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to do that. Good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.